这就是这就是红木了啊，红木。沙比利也是红木啊，啊，沙比利也是叫，呃，对，也含在红木里，红木里面有十几个品种。哪里的品？没有。嗯，可能这里压不压吧？呃，麦霸，这是麦霸，摩欧洛，是欧的的，啊，呃，这是半边机。Amora, Amora locks from here. It's many, many my bar number. Who's up there? Ah, so, 反正你慢慢走，他在拍啊 ，Russell. The booming Chinese port of Zhangjiang, just north of Shanghai, has rapidly become one of the world's biggest trading centers for tropical logs. Around half a billion dollars worth of logs from Southeast Asia, Africa and South America arrive at the port each year to feed China's rapacious timber processing industry. Merbau logs are the most common timber found at the port. This luxurious dark hardwood is used in the manufacture of flooring. Most of these logs are contraband, stolen from the forests of Indonesia's Papua province and smuggled into China. With huge cargo ships arriving daily, it is a trade of breathtaking scale and destructive. A new report by the Environmental Investigation Agency and Telepak exposes the massive illegal trade in Merbau logs from Indonesia to China. EIA and Telepak's report reveals how shadowy international networks are conspiring to steal huge amounts of valuable Merbau logs from Indonesia and smuggling the contraband to China using false Malaysian documents often with the complicity of the Indonesian authorities. The illegal Merbau Trail starts in Indonesia's Papua province, the western part of the island of New Guinea. This unique island contains the largest remaining substantial tracts of undisturbed tropical forest in the entire Asia-Pacific region. As rampant illegal logging in Indonesia has all but exhausted the main lowland commercial timber species in Sumatra and Kalimantan, the timber barons have switched their attention eastwards to the last frontier of Papua. In 2003, EIA and Telepak travelled to the Bird's Head region to investigate the impact of this logging on local communities, beginning in the port of Sarong, a major hotspot for illegal logging. Sarong is where many of the illegal timber deals are conducted. Buyers arrive and use connections with the military to secure cut price deals for Merbau logs. Despite Indonesia banning the export of all logs in 2001, a constant flow of logs leaves the area on cargo ships and barges, bound for the international market. In early 2003, the Indonesian Navy seized this vessel en route to China with a cargo of illegal Merbau logs. EIA and Telepak investigators headed to the remote Seramuk area five hours outside Sarong to witness illegal logging on the lands of the Kanasimos people. At one location over 2,000 cubic metres of Merbau logs were stacked ready for collection. Villagers explained how logging in the area was organised by a senior military police officer called Kaspar Ahoywirin. 
saya bisa nge- menjelaskan bahwa investor asing tadi kebanyakan diblokir di Soron sementara di backing oleh pihak militer itu sangat jelas Jadi pihak militer yang sementara e, berada di balik pengusaha yang sekarang masuk di wilayah adat kena Saimos itu salah satu. Selain umumnya di tanah Papua yang kita sudah lihat, e, sepertinya sekarang yang di sini e, Tuan Gaspar itu adalah Wadan Pom e, Soron yang berada di balik pengusaha yang beroperasi di sini. E, sehingga ya kami lihat prakteknya di lapangan memang seperti itu. Dan sangat jelas bahwa yang hadir itu berlatar belakang militer, sehingga membuat masyarakat ya masyarakat di sini jelas melihat namanya militer ini sangat tidak bisa dia ada haknya untuk harus berbicara duduk bersama tidak bisa. EIA and Telepak found further evidence of Merbau theft in the island chain of Raja Ampat, lying to the west of Sorong. Here, logging was taking place in protected nature reserves with the connivance of local forestry officials. On the island of Batanta, investigators came across a Malaysian barge ready to load logs cut from a nature reserve. Papua adalah satu tempat di mana illegal logging itu beroperasi secara sangat masif, sangat buruk. Nah, target yang menjadi sasaran dari operasi penambangan ilegal ini adalah merbau di mana e, ini dipasarkan sampai ke pasar-pasar luar negeri salah satunya Cina nah upaya penegakan hukum terhadap e, operasi penambangan ilegal ini jauh dari memadai di mana para cukong yang berada di balik e, penambangan ini yang mengeksploitasi e, komunitas lokal masyarakat setempat kemudian juga dibantu dengan masuknya alat berat dan tenaga kerja asal Malaysia ini masih belum tersentuh e, upaya penegakan hukum dan juga masih banyak pengapalan-pengapalan yang lolos luput dari uh, penegakan hukum. Nah, ke depan itu Papua harus menjadi prioritas, salah satu prioritas, fokus. Di mana semua pihak yang terlibat berada di balik penebangan li- uh, liar ini harus diusut, harus disidik secara serius. Kemudian upaya lainnya adalah merbau itu dicantumkan, didaftarkan ke Appendix 3 CITES. Sehingga lewat instrumen ini, negara-negara konsumen yang menampung, menerima, itu harus turut bertanggung jawab. Harus turut membantu penghentian perdagangan ilegal dengan kuota tertentu. Powerful international criminal syndicates are making huge profits through the smuggling of merbau logs out of Papua and into China. While communities are paid a pittance of $10 per cubic meter, the same logs are worth up to $270 on arrival in China. One such syndicate was exposed in 2003 when a man named Husin Gunawan, involved in arranging the shipment of illegal timber out of Indonesia, wrote a detailed letter to the authorities naming syndicate members. His letter failed to mention the name of his brother, Heng Ijat Hong, who from this office in Jakarta runs a timber smuggling business focused on Papua. A Hong, as he is known, is a long-standing associate of Abdul Rashid, named by the Ministry of Forestry as one of the biggest illegal logging barons in the country. Gunawan did name a series of middlemen. Singapore-based Frankie Chua provides false documents. EIA and Telepak investigators were introduced to Chua while probing the illegal trade in timber between Indonesia and Singapore. No buyer, no smuggling. Oh. Uh, then who's the smuggler? Who's the buyer? <laughs> uh, this is uh, 
This a mafia. <laughs> this mafia better than the rugs mafia. Right? <laughs> rugs mafia is no good. This one is okay. <laughs> Yuzri Bell, also from Singapore, organises the shipment of Murbao logs from Papua to China. His company, E Maritime, chartered the vessel Bravery Falcon, which was apprehended by the Indonesian Navy off Papua in 2003, carrying over 17,000 cubic metres of Murbao logs destined for China. Who is chartered? This ship. Captain Chan may charter this ship is E Maritime, E Maritime Singapore. Bell had instructed the Vietnamese captain of this vessel to fly a false Indonesian flag during loading to evade detection. The captain recently received a two year jail sentence, but Bell is still in business. Timber brokers in Jakarta, like Ahong, play a key role in arranging protection for Murbao shipments and finding buyers. In late 2004, EIA and Telepak undercover investigators met with Yaman Yao of the company Graha Dharma Sakti to discuss Murbao supplies. EIA and Telepak followed the Murbao Trail to Hong Kong, a key hub for timber brokers supplying logs to the Chinese mainland. One such broker is Xiaoman Xiu, boss of the company Great Win Asia, which has a branch in Java, Indonesia. During the course of an hour-long meeting, Xiu explained how Murbao from Papua is smuggled into China using fake Malaysian documents to supply flooring factories near Shanghai. From Hong Kong, EIA and Telepak travelled to the mega city of Shanghai, at the heart of China's economic miracle. In the nearby port of Zhangjiagang, the investigators met up with Xu and observed piles of Murbao logs from Indonesia. So these are all Murbao logs? Huh? These are all Murbao logs? Yeah, yeah, all Murbao logs. All from? From, from Indonesia or from PNG? Only very little from Malaysia. But those mobile logs from Indonesia, all with the document from uh, Malaysia. But all from because Mal Malaysia already lost so many mobile round logs. Right. Already lost so many. But in Indonesia, in Papua, still many, many mobile round logs. This kind of tree, you know, nearly 100 years old. 100 years old? Yeah, with this one meter diameter, 90 years, 100 years. <laughs> the 
port doubles as a marketplace and the lobby of a nearby building is pasted with flyers advertising Murbao logs for sale. Big diameter. Arrived in uh, September 15. But they, they are made, they are owned, yeah, 5,000 CBM, uh, CBM. A few hours south of Shanghai is the industrial town of Nanshun. Known locally as Murbao Town, in the last five years hundreds of factories have sprung up in Nanshun, churning out thousands of kilometres of Murbao wood flooring. There are over 200 sawmills in the town processing Murbao logs, the vast majority of which have been stolen from Papua. of every working day, the Nanshan factories process one Murbao log into flooring. While much of the Murbao flooring is used domestically to feed China's construction boom, many of the factories also export to overseas markets such as the US and Europe. The Shanghai-based firm Sihi Wood revealed to EIA and Telepak undercover investigators that they regularly export Murbao flooring to the UK, Canada and the USA. Mm. For Murbao, I think every month we export about uh, 20,000, 20, 25,000, I think. 25,000 yeah. square metres. And that's most... Is, is Murbao already... Are you selling Murbao to UK market already or? Yeah, a little. A little, a little but yeah. Mostly to elsewhere? Mostly, I think, to Canada. To Canada? Canada and the United States, mostly. How to say, Canada and the United States, how to say, uh, yeah, about, uh, cover about 70% of our sales volume, so mostly. 70% of? Yeah, of our, all our sales volume. Right. So, UK, maybe 5%, I'm not sure. It's very nice. It is very nice. Shipping documents confirm recent shipments of Murbao flooring from Sihi to Canadian firm Goodfellow, which distribute the flooring across North America. One sample seen by EIA and Telepak near Washington DC was retailing for $77 per square meter. A huge illegal trade in Murbao logs between Indonesia and China is one of the world's biggest environmental crimes. This timber smuggling is in contravention of the national laws of both countries. Indonesia and China have already signed a formal agreement to cooperate in combating illegal trade in timber. Yet so far these words have not been matched by actions. EIA and Telepak urge the governments of Indonesia and China to work together to tackle this damaging illegal trade in Murbao which threatens the forests of Papua. The massive illegal trade in Murbao between Indonesia and China is threatening the last pristine forest in the Asia-Pacific region. While a chain of brokers and middlemen are earning vast profits, the communities of Papua are being robbed to feed China's rapacious timber industry.